Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, coming today. Uh, sorry, we started a bit later than normal. Uh, we having some uh, uh, technical issues, um, but I think we have those squared away. Um, thank you again. Uh, so today we're going to talk about home ed. Before um, we get into that, uh, I have a, just a, a short, um, uh, some housekeeping stuff and in terms of just what's coming up. And uh, um, I think today we also have, a, a, almost every meetup we have new folks. Um, so they just give you some background. So we're, we've been, uh, if you're new to the group, welcome. Um, we've, we've been around for about five years. Uh, we are a Seattle-based meetup. Um, up until the beginning of the pandemic, we were uh, in person, but uh, since then we've switched um, and we'll probably keep this format. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, if you just recently signed up, you'd have noticed we've got over 4,000 members. Um, the, the One of the goals is to actually... Um, uh, do more than just talking about how to use the technology. Uh, you know, we actually want to be able to answer questions around, you know, how does IoT impact different jobs, uh, different industries, um, you know, lives, uh, which we're going to talk about today, smart homes. Um, we generally cover uh, topics around three areas. Uh, one is the technology itself, so uh, digital twins, edge computing, um, but um, we're trying to do it slightly differently by uh, talking about Moro IoT tech is fairly new. Uh, so there's a lot of evolving business models and ecosystems that are kind of coming up and uh, still kind of building up. Um, so we want to talk about all of that. Uh, this year, we're going to do more. Um, we actually started at the end of the last year with manufacturing. We're going to do more industry-focused meetups, um, essentially looking at how uh, all of these technologies changing different innovation, uh, industrial or commercial uh, processes within different industries. Um, and then finally, uh, last year, we started a series um, uh, primarily uh, initially focused on hardware startups, connected hardware startups, because we have a lot of folks who are building um, startups or want to um, have ideas where it requires them to build a physical product. Um, and so we started a series uh, last year with um, we kicked it off with the University of Washington and uh, the Echo Motion Labs uh, Hardware Hall, which is a new um, hardware incubator here in Seattle. And uh, the goal with those meetups is really to, to help folks who are trying to build a hardware startup or an IoT startup or an industry 4.0 startup um, to essentially connect them to folks who can help them on their journeys and, and educate them on what you need to do. Um, you know, for example, hardware, how do you actually take your idea and turn it into a physical product? Um, we're also doing a series as part of that uh, funding. Um, I think it was last, last week, the week before, we had uh, Pioneer Square Labs, uh, which is a startup studio here in Seattle, and Fortiv, talking about their joint partnership with, um, uh, um, uh, to, to build a, a startup studio here uh, focused on industrial startups. We've had uh, GE Ventures, um, and uh, um, we'll have more of these corporate VCs come out as well to, to essentially talk about the ecosystem. It's not very easy building a, a startup in this space because it is very different from a typical B2B SaaS startup. Um, um, if you've missed any of the videos, at least beginning of pandemic, uh, they're all up on YouTube. Uh, the link I think is on, on our meetup page. Um, Otherwise, uh, they're all up there, including the uh, LF Edge uh, introduction. If you're interested in LF Edge projects, we had Jason um, Shepard, uh, who's one of the board members of uh, LF Edge. Um, he did a high level overview of what um, uh, LF Edge is all about. And, and Aaron here will cover a little bit and uh, um, so you can go watch that. Offline, when we're not in meetups, uh, we do have a Discord server set up for the uh, meetup group. Um, 
there's usually a fair amount of activity, but there are uh, it, it's uh, it has um, a lot of hardware folks on there. So if you're looking for a hardware uh, help with hardware, that's the place to go ask questions. Um, but otherwise, it's it's a it's a place to connect outside of this. You can do video calls if you're not familiar with Discord. It's pretty similar to Slack, but it's a uh, meetup friendly. Um, so we also just uh, recently kicked this off because uh, there are folks who uh, are looking for um, uh, to fill jobs uh, as either full-time employees, freelancers. Um, I also occasionally get uh, someone asking me uh, if I know of a potential co-founder. Um, and uh, so what we've done is rather than uh, it going through me or one of the uh, organizers, uh, there's a spreadsheet. So if you're looking for someone, there's a form you can fill out um, or you can post it in Discord. Uh, there's a lot more activity on, on, in, on Discord than the form itself. If you're looking for your gig, there's a spreadsheet or check out Discord. Okay, uh, uh, upcoming meetups. Um, so tomorrow we're going to be hosting Sean Edwards uh, along the uh, open source theme again. Um, so last year we had uh, Kat Scott from Open Robotics. Um, and if you don't know Open Robotics, Open Ro Robotics is responsible for uh, ROS, which is the uh, open source uh, robot op operating system. Um, and uh, uh, Sean is the founder of uh, um, Ross Industrial. And essentially what they did was took Ross and uh, are ex have extended it for industrial use cases. So he's going to talk about uh, um, uh, Ross Industrial as a uh, open source kind of middleware platform for uh, robotics. Um, and he'll also talk about Plus One uh, Robotics, um, his startup and uh, share how they're using uh, ROS as part of that. So if you're into robotics, uh, check out the uh, uh, video, ROS video from last year on YouTube. And uh, tomorrow, um, Sean will be talking about um, ROS, I, uh, ROS Industrial. Um, OK, some housekeeping. If you, uh, in, so the way we do questions is uh, we usually invite folks onto the stage, um, essentially to mimic a in-person meetup. Um, it also allows you to interact with the speaker, and um, uh, it's much easier because you have a lot more context. The way to ask questions is you uh, will see an icon on the right side of your screen that just says questions. Um, add your question in there. Um, try and keep it out of chat because sometimes chat gets noisy and your question might get lost. Um, but also, if you put the question in there, other people can see what you're asking for. They can vote for it uh, and upvote for it. Um, uh, the other way is to just raise your hand. Um, so at the bottom of your screen, there should be a little hand icon. Um, that is the easiest way for me to bring you on stage. Uh, but otherwise, you know, uh, uh, if you have a question, use one of those two. Either one of them work. Um, occasionally, you will see um, a, uh, so if AirMeet is uh, finicky with the bandwidth, so occasionally you'll see a little signal strength meter pop up. Um, and if that happens to you, uh, you will um, see there's a way for you to change the um, uh, essentially uh, uh, change it from uh, high definition to low definition. Um, that usually works. If it's a bit pixelated, but the sound will come through clearly. Um, but if you get kicked off, that's probably going to be the reason. Um, and it is unfortunately sometimes aggressive about kicking people off. Um, uh, there is a survey, uh, but uh, I'll send this out. Um, after the event, uh, we're going to allow some time for networking. So when you came in, if you came in earlier, you would have been um, uh, put into the uh, networking lounge and seen a bunch of tables. Um, uh, those tables are uh, essentially like a small Zoom call. Uh, all you do is you click on a chair. And uh, provided there are two or more people, it will set you up in a video call. Uh, and you can chat in there. You can uh, do, you can share screens if somebody wants to share a screen. Um, so you can do all the normal things that you do on a, on a Zoom call. Um, so we'll do that. Um, I have three tables set up. Uh, one is just for IRT Hub. If you have questions, always looking for speakers. We'll 
talk about that in a second. Um, uh, and so I'll be I'll I'll be at the IoT Hub meetup table. Uh, I set one up for LF Edge. Um, if you're interested in in uh, learning more about LF Edge or any of the projects, um, Aaron uh, will be at the LF Edge table, and then uh, um, Suresh will hopefully be able to connect to the table that's set up for Home Edge. Um, so if anyone wants to ask questions afterwards. Um, that will be the forum. And um, it's now 4.30 Pacific. I'll be here until 6 Pacific. So, you know, uh, uh, if we don't get through all the questions on the uh, uh, in our main session, then we'll um, switch to the networking lounge. OK, so um, today uh, we're going to talk about smart homes. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is part of our uh, um, intro to the different projects, uh, uh, open source projects for IoT. Um, and in this case, we're covering LF Edge um, and the projects that fall under uh, LF Edge umbrella. Um, so uh, unfortunately, Munki couldn't join because uh, uh, he's behind a corporate firewall in an office. Um, before we get to Suresh, um, Aaron, I want to introduce Aaron. So Aaron is developer advocate for LF Edge. He's actually been helping me set up these um, sessions with the different projects. So if you have any LF Edge questions, um, Aaron's your guy. Um, so I will stop sharing. And Aaron, if you want to. Hello, let me quickly pull this up. And I, I only have a couple, so don't worry, it's not going to be uh, very long. Um, and just you should hopefully see this real quick. Um, so yeah, my name is, hello and welcome. My name is Aaron Williams. Um, I'm the uh, dev advocate for LF Edge and community manager. Um, and so, uh, you know, there are nine projects, and I'll show you those in just a moment that are underneath the LF Edge. But really, kind of to start off the conversation, we always talk about what is the Edge. Edge is very different to different people. Um, if you've been in the IoT world, you know, for longer than, I don't know, a month, you've kind of figured this out. Um, and the way what we've done um, at the LF Edge is try to start really defining where um, the edge is and what it is. Um, so if you start thinking of, um, you know, data centers, you know, um, you know, AWS, things like that, that is definitely not the edge in the way we do it. And we talk, so, you know, that is to us, the internet. Now, this is kind of where it depends on where you're working from. If you're with Verizon or uh, any telco, you know, uh, Deutsche Telekom, T-Mobile, uh, all of that, their edge is kind of right in front of the towers. So they're starting to put um, servers and uh, data centers right there at the tower base, um, you know, to speed up connections and uh, just make, you know, the process go a lot further so you don't actually have to end up back here at this data center. Um, now, where I came from, I came from kind of the smart device edge and these constrained devices. So they're really, really tiny. So to me, this is where the edge really is, or, or at least in my view. But, you know, as I've worked on, you know, we have lots and lots of different parts of the edge. Um, so what we kind of try to start off these conversations with just this. This is kind of... Um, kind of an overview of uh, the, the scope of LF Edge. And Home Edge is one of my favorite projects to describe and talk about because unlike all of the other names on here, um, you actually know from its name what it is. This is the edge that really focuses on the home. So it is focused on that devices and that those gateways um, you know, that are centered inside the home. And this is just kind of one more little slide on it. The reason is, is I just really want to show you home hedge here is really down on our user edge. 
um, as you would expect, you know, um, you know, so just, you know, absolutely connecting those devices on there. And all I wanted to do is kind of show you some of our other projects right here. Um, but on this page is Home Edge. Um, there is no hierarchy to this slide. I think they're in alphabetical order, if I remember right. And that is, this is as kind of the intro page uh, for Home Edge. Uh, really concentrates on uh, driving and enable, you know, that intelligent home, everything that you need, but in a much more open source way and not get you kind of stuck uh, in the Apple world or the Google world, but really use the concepts of IoT, um, APIs, things like that uh, to allow you to run at, at the home, to build something out, you know, whether it be, you know, you could connect multiple of these together too. So if you, you know, wanted to run multiple home instances, but it, it's really to for that interaction between uh, your devices um, and what's going on here. And that's outside of this. And so what I wanted to just kind of quickly show, oops, I'm now going through slides I'm not supposed to show. I want to, you know, finish up on that one. So let me, in my presentation, and let's get to the, the main course here, uh, which is, let me introduce Suresh. Suresh is, uh, he's the open source evangelist uh, with uh, Samsung. He focuses on, on Home Edge, and he's a chief engineer there. Um, and as we said before, he's out of Bangalore, India. Um, yeah, I've gotten the pleasure to meet him a couple times at some events. I think the last time we met in the pre-COVID days was in in Madrid or excuse me, Barcelona, and an event there. So I'm really looking forward to uh, this. And Suresh, um, yeah. why don't we bring you up and let you tell everybody about Home Edge? Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. Suresh. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, Hans. Maybe you can start with your background and uh, yeah. Let us start. yeah. Sure, okay. Yeah. So thank you, Hans and Aaron, uh, for bringing me over here in the IoT web. Uh, I've been associated with Samsung for the past 15 years. I uh, have worked on various domains from B2B perspective, B2C perspective, application side, messaging domain, health domain, and uh, various stuff, and also on the middleware side. So for the past uh, Two years we have been associated with the open source part of it on the home edge smart homes and we are working on this uh, for the past two years so that's how i've become out here uh, i guess i will directly step into my uh, slide deck yep go, go ahead yeah just a moment yeah over here thank you guys so yep. uh, i guess you would have seen a lot more has been talked about in the edge and all the more the edge as of now is more on the industrial side on the manufacturing side and this is one of the uh, few projects which differentiates from the other edge being the home edge as aaron says it's all in the name it's over uh, giving out directly like we are more into the smart homes and the edge devices and it's one of the thing like for Samsung, it's more onto the uh, devices, OEMs, being OEM, a smart home, uh, smart devices manufacturer and a mobile phone manufacturer. It's always, uh, we see it from the home perspective on the initial uh, lines. So going on with the agenda for the today, I'll uh, give an overview of, uh, I think part of it is already covered by Aaron. So I just will uh, slide through it on the LF edge overview, very basics. Uh, then on uh, the existing smart home, why we went in for the smart home, what is the need for a smart home platform, a home edge platform, then what is home edge, what were the uh, basic MVP for the home edge to have it and why do we need, to, what are the features the home edge needs to have and we'll see a given executive summary of what are the various releases which have been done and a high level architecture of what home edge stands across now, then we'll be having a uh, the, about the various releases which we have done as of now and then we'll go into an uh, use case which uh, Aaron had told about the uh, Barcelona event which we had participated and showcased our demo 
so we'll try to show the you uh, play the video of a uh, have a, a video grab of the two uh, uh use case so that we'll play towards the end so that people can really get what homage and what we are trying to do over here and what use cases can be built on top of it which will help us and what is the journey ahead uh this year what we are planning as a open source project and what we are thinking across and so that would be the overall agenda for this meetup so going into the edge uh, i think these things would be known for the more, most of the people so top five edge markets we see home also plays over here in one of the uh, uh, players being a uh, fourth in the sense but uh, the reason could be one of the cases is the number of devices the whole number of smart home devices is growing compared to an industry or an energy or any other uh, uh, domains uh, home it is growing now but uh, hopefully in another uh, an year or so we could see more amount of devices uh, which are pouring in, into the home and it will come on in one of the top uh, one or two itself so every home has now more number of uh, speakers and smart devices so uh, smart locks and each and you name it and we'll have it at the home so the home smart home and edge at the home is a key important thing which we need to concentrate on also so going into the thing like this which uh, Aaron had showed across so what is the need for the uh, edge and uh, more specifically into home edges three things which is more important when we say uh, edge and home edge that is proximity responsiveness and mobility so proximity is very uh, what uh, the data which needs to be stored and which needs to be computed is always near to you it is more better for us in the sense of two things one is on the uh, security side privacy side and also on the computation and the responsive side so in these two cases for these two reasons it is always important to have the uh, operation of computing as well as storing the device uh, data very near to the edge very near to the device uh, near to the user at the end of the day and then coming into the home it is always the mobile phone is now like a device uh, like a user twin it is almost like how we say a device twin in azure and stuff here it has become a user twin every user is now identified with the mobile so so always he's on mobility so this is also one of the reason why we need to have an edge uh, computation and uh, at the end of uh, at the end of the uh, scenario like from the northbound to the southbound when we see the computation at the edge is more important so <clears throat> coming into some of the uh, there's a high level of various projects which uh, even Aaron has showed across so we sit at the bottom of the home edge at the residential we can see so we have the mobile networks which is a telco like the oran and acrino where they play into with the uh, operators that is on the enterprise side uh, as well as on the residential side so now we are more on to the residential market and on to the residential side of the open source uh, other there are other players like edgex foundry and fledge which are more into the industrial iot and enterprise iot so we stand more into the industrial smart home and we can extend it to the smart buildings and smart cities so that is how we for project ourselves as a home edge project so now i'll get into the home edge project of it so what is the facts of the existing systems so in current existing scenarios if we see every home has n number of devices starting from the doorbell to the ca surveillance camera to the smart bulbs to the hvac systems or the smart uh, washing machines and refrigerators which go into our uh, kitchens or any you we name it we have a smart device on it so there the home is getting now overloaded with many number of smart devices so managing all these smart devices and there are many different operators oems which are producing each smart devices uh, the lg is there samsung is there you uh, how is there many device many manufacturers are there and they are having uh, all the, their own uh, proprietary platforms and proprietary software solutions which are being developed and they use it for their systems so the home has become like a more like a congruence of many de different devices from different vendors 
But at the end of the day, when there need to be a computation which needs to be done, the smart home devices, which are very small in terms of both, uh, except for the mobile, all the other devices are really co constrained in the uh, uh, CPU processing power or also on the memory capability. So more we rely currently on is a cloud center, cloud where the, all the computation, even for the machine learning model execution or any uh, uh, inferences or any rule engine execution, we rely more into the cloud to get the uh, result and perform the action on the edge. So current system is more relying on the cloud and we try to bring it into the edge. So what is the, uh, the drawbacks of having the cloud uh, so computation in the sense? So two things, one is latency, another is data privacy. So unlike a manufacturing unit where all the data is on more amount, more is from the uh, the manufacturing point of view of a, say how a tire is being manufactured, how the quality of the tire is or those kind of stuffs. In case of uh, home, it is more on the user perspective. It is on the uh, every individual user's own da uh, private data, which is going to get into the cloud. So the privacy of the user bring uh, becomes a more important thing and there was a research and in uh, people say that they do want uh, smart homes but they do feel that uh, in ireland this research was done and they feel that uh, there could be a reason that privacy would would go for a task if it goes into a cloud and still the, uh, the population out there needs to accept how the privacy is being uh, taken care in case of smart uh, devices so, but we do hear a lot of uh, data leaks from uh, you, many, many uh, applications, many uh, uh, services. We do know data leaks happen every now and then. So the data privacy plays a very important role. Next is the latency. So in case of smart home devices, the responsiveness is more important. Say when we are at, standing at the door and the surveillance camera is uh, you are detecting the user, the responsiveness to send the uh, signal to the door lock to unlock the door immediately needs to be like it, it should. Uh, there shouldn't be any fraction of delay in it. It should be a seamless uh, movement. Like once the user sees the uh, uh, doorbell camera, the door automatically unlocks. And for this, it is more important if the, all these computations, all the actions and inferences happens at the edge, at the home edge level itself, rather than going into the cloud for taking across these process computations. And uh, a few studies have been done wherein they say for every 100 miles of data being uh, traveling, there's a delay of 0 0.2 to 8 milliseconds. And for some critical data like both uh, user privacy data or a cam a video data, user data, like say for example, the video, video data of the user or the health data of the user, say when there's a health monitoring system at the home and if that's, <coughs> um, <coughs> sorry, say there's a, a few parameters vitals go <coughs> out of the range of the user, then the response should be very immediate of say calling a nurse or calling a uh, caretaker immediately. So for all these things, the latency also plays an important role. And hence, a smart home is a very important edge at the smart home is all more needed for having it. And so these play, uh, give a very uh, need that we need to have a smart edge platform for the home devices. So going into the uh, smart home, how the uh, growth rate has been we see across and how it is being forecasted across for the next year. There are very different uh, categories in smart homes. Like we have various appliances like the washing machines, uh, the fridge, smart TV and stuff. And then we have the various, the lighting and the comforting uh, systems. And then the entertainment systems now every has, every uh, home has at least one, minimum one to two spe smart device speakers like the Alexa or the Google Home, you, we name it, we have it. Then the security, the most uh, other predominantly uh, are available the bought their devices by the people like they say the blink camera or any uh, nest or any stuff people are more going into it have adopting these systems for their uh, for this sake of security and surveillance and then control and connectivity so these are the various markets subdomains we see in a smart home and all these markets are growing from 
the say how it was on five years back and now how it is growing ahead it is a very exponential growth so we do we should do understand that uh, edge processing at smart home is more needed and it has to be done and uh, it is one of the very uh, future future area which needs to be concentrated upon across by the various users or various developers and pr service providers so as i said real time data processing and real time iot and ai analytics so these are some two important key things which we need to understand for uh, our uh, uh, smart homes and it, it is uh, needed for any uh, industry even for an industrial iot these are the important key things which uh, urge for having this edge at the uh, say at the industry or the level or the smart home level and for uh, home it is more on the data privacy which comes into a very uh, higher uh, import priority for bringing the smart edge so uh, i guess uh, this is how what are the drivers and enablers of uh, the need for having a smart uh, edge home edge platform for us so uh, as i was mentioning there are many lot number of devices and lot number of devices are from different manufacturers oems so each oem have their own proprietary methods of uh, onboarding a device or uh, handling or execution or execution of the device so it has become now like a very different uh, uh, drive different players are into the market because of the different devices and uh, there is not a common method or a um, uh, of edge uh, of uh, devices talking to each other uh we have different methods of like say the protocol level we have say the uh, bt a bluetooth is there a wifi is there wifi aware is there and many different methods are there but that is on more on the protocol level but on from the application point of view uh, if one device wants to use another device or send uh, say for example a motion sensor detects the user and it or, or needs to any immediately send a signal to the uh, uh light home lighting system to switch on the light or say once a user ent enters a garage the garage the door opens and it immediately unlocks the door recognizing the user and also uh, switches on the light these are something where the device interoperability or communication between devices is more uh, needed and everything is at the home edge level uh so this is one thing next another thing is uh, learning the user patterns and uh, executing based upon the user patterns so what i mean by executing based on the user patterns and stuff is like say if a user gets up daily at uh, at 7 a 6 am in the morning so making us uh, switching on this uh, hvac accordingly making the water making the uh, kettle warm for us um, early morning coffee uh, say for example if he is a gym user making the gym, uh, i'm getting him ready for the gym or if uh, if he is going to practice yoga play some uh, videos for him help him out on these stuff so basically learning the user's uh, motion say for example user uh, goes to an office daily at 8 o'clock understanding the tra the user's uh, uh, driving directions look at uh, map and uh, giving him predictions like say which would be the best route for him rather than uh, the user going into the uh, google maps or uh, maps to say check which would be a faster route so these are some things that which needs the technologies needs to enable for the users and for all these learning the user uh, pattern and learning the user's lifestyle is more important but all these along with the safety of the uh, the data privacy is also more important uh, thing which needs which plays a role uh, for all the and for all these things we do understand that real time processing has to be done and it, it should be with latency should be the least in all these cases uh, so smart home uh, we have various number of use cases which can bring come over here and uh, we do understand that uh, these were the uh, point which uh, focus does made us focus okay let's build a platform smart for uh, smart home and a edge platform for it and we thought but though samsung being an uh, oem we what we wanted to be more like an open source so that it can be used across different oems and it can be a common platform and hence we brought into this smart home edge platform and uh, this is a potential use case or a potential area 
of development <clears throat> so these are again some of the various different categories i've uh, showcased over here so the first one if you see is the uh, smart locks which is now going uh, being adopted across everywhere uh, be it from uh, us to any place we have you know, all more many developing countries are also going into smart lock systems into it surveillance camera in uh, and still uh, after surveillance camera it is now the smart speakers actually in, in from say five years back to till now camera is the most predominant uh, device which is uh, which has been adopted by the various users in the smart home environment so and people more rely uh, cameras for their security and monitoring purpose say from the uh, pet monitoring or a child care monitoring to uh, surveillance security stuff so the uh, camera has been playing a key role uh, which has uh, penetrated into the smart homes into the home uh, environment more easily when compared to other devices but other devices are also coming into it but the rate of penetration is bit less when we compare to a camera uh, next to camera is our speakers which are now become like every days uh, next uh, like uh, every user have their own uh, mobile and uh, gear next is the speaker which is there predominantly across every home and system so all these speakers are always listening on to you uh, to us and their natural language processing in some is one of the few the key thing which needs to be done and the response for the natural language processing has to be the very fast and it should be immediate time responsiveness and hence there the latency plays a very important role if we are on a low bandwidth networks and all so always it is better to have the processing at the edge of it uh, the other uh, area which i mentioned is the uh, healthcare being in these covid times and stuff the healthcare has also started being a, a important focus and uh, user health data is now an important uh, da uh, data from the perspective of the user for himself as well as from for the uh, community to see how the uh, any device or how the immunity or stuff or getting on so the user health data is more sensitive data and there are various uh, complaints like say the hipaa complaints and stuff which says how the user data health data has to be stored and how it can be shared across so uh, health data is one of the key key things which we need to take across and hence all these have come into the need of an home edge going on into the uh, I'll, uh, before getting into the home edge we just wanted to share across uh, trends across the various edge platforms to show how it is uh, across the uh, what other players are also in the edge platforms so over here if we see i've uh, shared three you players mainly they are from the cloud platforms the green grass as yet or the azure and the google they are from the uh, cloud uh, player uh, big cloud players which are who are also coming into the edge and they have their edge platforms on that side and other is the edge foundry which is a part of our lf edge itself a very uh, robust and a very wide platform for an edge uh, from the edge point of view for even for an industrial or the smart home and then our home edge so here i have put across the comparison across the various uh, aspects or the features like say from the uh, hardware side the sdks the messaging support uh, the machine learning and stuff so here we see a few things is one of our uh, key point of to be noted is open source so in open source point of view green grass yeah it is not open source in azure iot it is partly open source only the iot edge is alone open source not the everything google iot edge yeah it is on the open source way and yeah, edgex foundry as i've said it is a part of lf edge so it goes without saying that it is an open source uh, completely uh then so uh, serverless functions do uh, as aws has the lambda functions so which helps in doing this then uh, we have the azure functions uh, which are uh, from the azure similarity of an serverless functions which are being supported from the azure uh, from case of google iot it is a cloud run which provides a similar functionality and uh, home edge and 
edgex foundry we are not from mainly on the cloud perspective so we have not uh, we are not providing such uh, functionalities but yes might be going ahead we don't want to be a cloud we want to be cloud agnostic and we want to be uh, uh, uh partnering with any type of cloud so we are uh, not concentrating on a single type of method for serverless functions uh on the embedded os uh, point of view linux is the one which we support home edge so the key things which we sub, uh, differentiate from other players is the compute offloading multi nat these are the two things which we have uh, differentiates ourselves from the other uh, edge platforms so compute offloading so what do you mean what do you mean by compute offloading is uh, uh, offloading the computational uh, uh, capability from one device to other device i'll be giving it uh, more details on this in the coming uh, slides so the reason for it is in case of home we have different devices and each device have different capabilities so uh, performing the computation uh by another device uh is more important the reason is say for example if a uh, camera wants to understand uh, user detection detect a user from the video source and if it doesn't have the uh, capability the say the model and another device which is the user mobile which is there on the same network uh, of the uh, camera it can you can have take this computation of the uh, camera uh, from of the mobile and help in detecting the user so that is a need for compute offloading why it is needed in home environment is in home environment different devices are with different capabilities whereas when we take industrial uh, kind of setup there are more like uh, we have a set of devices more like say camera devices then other uh, specific uh, raspberry pi devices which will say just check on mainly on the say quality point of view or execution point of view so there the uh, uh, the very uh, the variation of the capabilities is not much whereas in case of home devices the varied capabilities different across different devices as the home has different devices in the setup then comes the multi nat support so what is multi nat support so when different devices come into uh, play at home so the network capability of uh, camping on the different devices becomes a uh, you one of the important key issues and there are many deadlocks even in case of a home environment itself wherein we don't get the proper wifi signal or the say the network mobile so net, the network network signal so we go in for a, a router a, a boosters or a repeaters which will help in boosting the uh, wifi uh, strength so and uh, when such device such systems come into play discovering the device uh, devices on the different networks on the different routers is an uh, there's a, uh, a constraint on it i'll be talking on it on the coming slide so these are two things which we have providing as a home edge part of which which dis differentiates us from the other open sources say the edgex foundry so coming into the executive summary of what home edge is uh, providing what is the scope under home edge is we define various use cases for the home edge the architecture and the technical requirements then we define the various features and the apis which we target for the smart homes and other collaborations with which we want to uh, build upon say we have uh, collaborated with edgex foundry last year for developing our uh, one of the feature the data storage so not only with lfh we, we would like to also open collaborate with other open sources uh, then build blueprints of uh, smart homes which can be adopted by various uh, users and built more various devices which are there in the home network then what are the various services which they are providing for offloading my computing computational process then quality of service it goes without saying for any system quality of service is always very important it should and in various dynamic conditions it should be handled say uh, a device can go down in mid of the computation or the device can be in the network sometimes it will go out of the network so all these needs to be taken care 
a distributed machine learning is something which we uh, look across look ahead across in the coming years and we want to have it in our uh, system multi vendor operability it goes without saying as uh, different uh, oems or the different uh, devices are coming into play <coughs> and user privacy so these are some things uh, which are which are uh, our main technical charter requirements for building the home edge so how is the project uh, timeline uh, in this session i am trying to cover a very high level overview of uh, home edge and uh, sure i would like to meet up or uh, will uh, try to hang up with people around if they are uh, interested into the more details and we can uh, have some more sessions on te uh, technical details on uh, other sessions and in this sessions it is more on the high level point of higher level architecture view and how high how our uh, journey has been ahead, uh, till now so the first release was done in 2019 which is the edge orchestration and it has the most the basic uh, features that is uh, device discovery and uh, resource sharing that is a service sharing between the various devices so uh, that was released as a part of uh, baobab which was done in october 2019 uh, so various devices inside the home network can uh, or uh, uh, they can be device uh, can be de detected and also the uh, services which they are offering across uh, uh, so how the uh, service discovery happens everything on the, on those technical details it is like you can understand it to be every device exports their services and as a json and these can be shared across across other devices so these we can go into the details of technical when we are coming in next in 2020 what we delivered was a coconut release which was done in october 2020 so two major features which were done as a part of coconut release is data storage and mnetc so till in 2019 the data which is being generated from the device is not stored in the device as a part of home edge though the device stored it as its own uh, in its own framework uh, say the uh, the provider uh, say the motion sensor or the camera provider blinks he stores it in a, in, in its own proprietary uh, form and proprietary platform as a home edge we, we were not storing the uh, device generated data but what we needed is for say a machine learning model or going ahead we need to have the data for fine tuning the models so though the models are built upon the generic population data for fine tuning it we need the user specific data so we needed a data storage uh, feature and then as i said many devices are coming and many routers are also coming into play when uh, multi level uh, uh, houses are inside uh, multi levels or there's like a ground floor amazon i and plus floor in the same single house and many routers are there so the device discovery between these uh, div uh, routers needs is an important role what happens is actually there is a network layer constraint which does not help which does not allow the device discovery uh, on the lower net lower layers and that leads to the multi nat actually uh, that is a multi nat problem i'll coming in i'll be coming it into in, in the next slide uh, so in this year as a part of 2021 what we are thinking is uh, so we have been concentrating more on the uh, on the device side as of now so for running these models we need to have the model from the cloud so and also not all the data generated from the device can be stored at the uh, device itself so we need to sync a part of the data to the cloud so we are thinking of having a cloud synchronization mechanism wherein the device data the device metadata and the device generated data and the device services data can be uh, synced with the cloud so we are in the initial stages of identifying our features and stuff on this uh, for uh, cloud synchronization and then based on this dynamic service deployment would be our uh, dynamically if the service is not available at the edge how about deploying it from the cloud so these are these things which we are having as a part of uh, 2021 so to give a high level uh, we are uh, samsung is a part of it uh, holds uh, every month every month we have the tsc call uh, i would like to join uh, request people to join for our tsc call every uh, first tuesday of the month we have the tsc calls uh, home edge into the uh, if you subscribe into our uh, tsc mailing list you will uh, get to know the reminders and schedules 
uh, uh, so that helped on we have various other members IBM Edge Ericsson and we have many members on it uh, base code uh, baobab Bao, which was released in 2020 2019 then the uh, multi edge and the data storage which we has released as a part of uh, 2020 so these are some of the achievements as of now so going into the coconut release so coconut release which was done last year supported all these features so uh, i would like to uh, stress on the important few things which differentiates us here is the scoring manager which we have and then the multi net which i want to talk about a little more in detail so what is scoring manager uh, so i as i mentioned there are diver- different devices and each device has its own capability say a mobile has a, um, that uh, say in a system uh, in a home environment we have a camera a mobile phone and also a laptop and the laptop and the mobile phone have the capability of doing person detection and uh, uh, authorize authorizing the person so once a camera detects the person say has a video feed uh, it needs to uh, detect whether it he is an uh, appropriate person or it should detect an alarm it should raise an alarm for this it doesn't have the person detection model in within within the camera but it does understand that the mobile as well as the laptop which is connected on the same network have this capability so it needs to offload this uh, uh, service to the either of these device so for detecting which device for selecting the device we need some mechanism to detect which device it needs to offload this uh, functionality uh, so for this purpose what happens is we have we were thinking on a mechanism and we thought have having a scoring manager so what scoring manager does is uh, currently we use a cpu memory network bandwidth of the devices all the devices uh, get the score for or based upon out of these three values for each device and whichever device uh, scores better we use it we do understand uh, that there are some uh, pros and cons using this mechanism but for the initial stage we wanted to have some method of scoring a uh, scoring to offload this and going ahead we would also we are thinking of having a more dynamic or say a time series based scoring manager wherein uh, if the device gets is going to get used upon in this time uh, in the time when that will be offloading we will not do offloading at all so uh, that way of we want to uh, strengthen the scoring manager Uh, from going from a, a formula based to a time series and a, a self learning ma- method of scoring manager uh, we are having it in our bucket and we'll be doing it ahead in our uh, say uh, this year or the next year probably uh, next is the multi nat so what was the network uh, constraint which was which i was mentioning is say there is a device on a main nat and there is a device on the sub nat always when the device wants to communicate with the other device so what happens is it communicates uh, the device sends the uh, request to the nat which uh, uh, to the router which it is connected say router a router b router a has a device x and router b has a device y so when y tries to communicate to the device x it say it knows the ip of the device x so it go it sends say, uh, it first some communicate with the router b that i want to talk to i, I want to call this api and uh, say of the device uh, b uh, device y device x so uh, router b sends it to the upper layer of the network which is the router a and for router a it knows the uh, device x so it can communicate now when, uh, when we are coming into the other way of the device x trying to access the device y what happens is it is trying it will send a request to the router a router a immediately does not find it uh, find it within the its next level of uh, devices it only finds the next router so what happens is in the network layer it always go into the one layer above the uh, network so it goes out of the router a and it goes into the out of the network so it it so the device on the main nat cannot uh, discover the device which is on the sub nat whereas the vice versa alone is possible so we need to have a multi nat uh, this device discovery which will help in service offloading in case of home edge as service offloading is one of the key feature so uh, this multi nat helps uh, in device discovery how we do it is uh, uh, something like a vpn we run a multi nat server and this multi nat server runs in the main nat i'll get into the details in the technical aspects uh 
so currently uh, edge orchestration easy communication so current devices which we support is all rest based devices is what we are currently supporting and we are thinking of having a mqtt based pro mechanism for device discovery ahead but currently we don't support it also service offloading as i mentioned it is more on uh, this uh, scoring is based on cpu memory context network and stuff uh, it is for selecting the edge device for execution so multi nat discovery so in multi nat discovery we run a, a vpn server on the main nat and this vpn server uh, assigns a virtual ip to the various devices which are there on the subnet on also to the devices on the main nat and so all communications further to this happens using only the virtual ips rather than the actual ips this way device discovery is works fine initially our code uh, data storage is a single uh, node to store all device data and we use edgex for this purpose uh, core data metadata commands are used which we have uh, microservices which we are uh, adopting for storing the device data uh, initially the whole uh, project was java based later we moved into a go the reason for go moving into go, uh, go is we know uh, go has few uh, good features like when we, the two for an edge like uh, platforms the execution time which the devices are more memory constrained devices so the execution time and it has to be more uh, machine code which needs to be run directly and hence time constraint uh, uh, functionalities and computations needs to be performed then they have very uh, re restricted memory and so oh, no references only pointers can be used which uh, go has well, plays a good role when compared to java then uh, the orthogonality features are the simple features of a go language so these are the reasons now why we moved into go and our home edge is completely on go plat go language so i'm going into the next uh, this is a high level architecture how we uh, propose how we expect the home edge to be the complete platform is not yet uh, there on the open source but we do expect that this is how when we have the complete platform out say in a year or two this is how it should be currently the edge orchestration is open is open source and it is available in the home in the uh, github the data storage we integrate we work along with the edgex and uh, so the, it is also available as a part of it the home device control or the uh, cloud synchronization part of it is what we are uh, working on this year and we want to be uh, releasing it as a part of this year's role uh, and other stuff say the machine learning or these are more on the business point of view and uh, we will adopt we will we are open with other open sources if they are willing to for having their uh, machine learning mo models or uh, the platforms to be brought up into the home edge environment so when uh, home uh, high uh, home edge is completed completely available it, it this is how it would be looking upon going into the major components here as i mentioned i am trying to be more on the higher level like what are the features on the high fee, higher level details and more on the technical we can have a separate uh, meetups and uh, <clears throat> discussions where we can uh, have uh, knowledge sharing sessions of what uh, if people want to uh, have any queries or want to work on it or contribute towards our home edge so these are some of the managers or modules which we have the discovery manager configuration scoring so what are these do discovery manager discover as the name suggests they're discovering the various devices uh, and the services which are offered by these devices then the configuration device manager this is as i mentioned the capability the configuration of each device needs to be uh, exposed so that the other device understands that device a has the capability and device b has a different capability and if device a wants to use a capability of device b it can take the understand it and uh, use a capability so that is the role for configuration manager scoring manager for the purpose of offloading uh, functionality uh, the scoring manager helps in uh, 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 making a score out of the formula and uh, offloading based on the score then the orchestration api which is used by the orchestration agent for uh, interfacing with the uh, actual uh, orchestration for offloading purpose then uh, secure manager which we uh, relatively uh, last year brought it into our uh, home edge uh, basically for uh, role based access control of the services and stuff then the storage manager is for the uh, 
as i said for the data storage and then the mnadc for running the uh, mnadc server and assigning the virtual ips for the various devices which are are uh, there one major differences when compared to the other methods uh, of edge platform is say the even the azure or the uh, aws greengrass or the google iot edge also for them the cloud is going to talk with a single device at the edge na edge and all the all other devices are considered as a leaf devices so the cloud will only be talking with a single device and it is like a star network wherein all other devices talk to this centralized device whereas in case of home edge network it is a peer to peer co communication and each device can independently talk to the other device it uh, the device to device communication does not need to go through a uh, centralized system at all so this is one of the ma main differences in case of a topology or the communication how it happens in case of home edge uh currently we don't have a cloud uh, module till now but this year we are going to bring into the cloud module so we are thinking on how we are going to build on the cloud module also so whether how we'll be maintaining the same peer to peer communication with the cloud or how it would be will be uh, uh, brought upon on the higher level architecture say in a month or two uh releases i guess i have uh, covered upon here Uh, Apache Two like uh, only few things as as, uh, as it's an open source Apache Two license and contributors we have uh, currently Samsung has been the major uh, player uh, contributor for this Samsung is a maintainer for this uh, home edge project we have uh, developers from Korea India Ukraine who have been uh, contributing towards it uh, Ukraine has been helping out during for the security parts of the uh, home edge. so from the from the kpi point of view how do we stand these are few uh, things Op open source is uh, the uh, andra lf edge uh, is a linux based one but uh, we have we do have given uh, in case of android how how much it has been this has been uh, done internally uh, as a part of our study like how much if we want to integrate our open source with uh, android uh, platform and use it for an android application we have uh, tested it and how that is how we have even showcased in our demo which will be showing across in another few minutes uh, re releases uh, four releases including the alpha release which we did initially contributors 14 commits we have so many commits uh, we are following the cii best practices for uh, from the point of uh, infrastructure and the uh, code co other ends and quality we have the sonar clio sonar cloud integrated so uh, these are uh, to give you a high level gist of how open so from the open source and from the software point of view how home edge stands uh so a complete use case platform which uh, so what how what would be the use case when i want to adopt uh, when i adopt home edge what can i uh, build upon is would be any user any developer or any users point of view So a live feed. This is a whole complete message flow which I have shown over here. So what happens is we have say a two devices, a uh, phone lock and a, uh, a camera on the door front door. So both these devices are registered into to the using the device manager into our data storage into the metadata. And so what happens is say for example the user comes and uh, the device registration is the first process. One and two has the uh, part of it. Now what happens is. say the live feed of the user comes into the uh, comes through the camera so the user needs to be detected and if he is an authorized user the lock has to unlock automatically without doing a pin entry so what happens over here is the user, the live feed data is being sent into the co the context manager has the uh, 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 device data which is going to always get accumulated or uh, stored on the context manager from the context manager the device manager is going to queue all these device data onto the event queue which goes into an rule engine and the rule engine has the ml model or a, a simple inference rule also for pattern matching to find whether he is a uh, authorized user or not so when the uh, rule engine uh, fun performs the functionality it, it gives the signal to the uh, door lock to unlock the door or no, uh, not to allow the user so this is a whole high level flow and when i say uh, this rule engine 
the rule engine has to get the model or the rule from the cloud where the actual analytics and model tuning happens so the device exchange the data exchange sorry from the uh, device to the cloud also is one of the important role uh, and that is how we have that is how we are working for making the cloud synchronization as a part of this year's charter uh, so this is how a use case can be built upon and a similar use case is what we are going to show as a part of our demo coming ahead uh, also we have uh, tried to uh, play around a uh, home edge uh, since home edge doesn't support a cloud infrastructure what we thought was how about using an uh, iot edge of azure to take upon the cloud uh, functionalities and also can, can uh, using the home edge for the local execution part of it and to showcase how home edge can be integrated even with the azure iot edge so what happens is uh, what we have uh, showcased, showcased over here is controlling the HVAC system based on the number of people detected. Say, for example, the HVAC is set at, say, 22 degrees Celsius and uh, three users are there. And when the user reduces to, say, uh, one, the HVAC automatically increases to 23 degrees Celsius from 22. So this local execution is based upon the number of users so that it uh, provides a similar ambience. So what happens is the uh, orchestration model, orchestration, also the uh, people detection models, and then we have the smart things application from uh, Samsung which we are trying to just showcase over here. Uh, uh, send us, uh, send an uh, event to a SmartThings app to change the uh, temperature. Uh, so a a SmartThings staff should, uh, will take care of further uh, communicating with the uh, actual uh, HVAC uh, device, which we are not shown over here. So this is just to show a demo of how we have even did a small play around with Azure IoT. So in the Azure, we had the uh, edge orchestration Mod, uh, module and uh, so the device management we are using the azure's device management also so we have uh, on, on the uh, uh, what we say the mobile we have the uh, edge runtime which is going to run and then uh, we are offload uh, the edge orchestration is uh, is on the azure repository basically so this edge orchestration is first going to be uh, uh, downloaded into the uh, uh, <laughs> the my uh, laptop device which is there on the smart home device and then when there is a service request which comes from the camera it understands that using the edge orchestration module that the ipad as well as the uh, laptop can do the person detection module uh, model and it sends the signal to the uh, hvac uh, the mobile so this is a small uh, showcase for how uh, azure is being used uh, which can it works along with the uh, home edge <laughs> so this is the uh, demo which we had uh, uh, part, uh, participated in 2019 uh, iot world congress barcelona so what it was is uh, anomaly detection and another use case was uh, low end device uh, computer uh, computation so what are the two what are these two features say for uh, there's a surveillance camera and uh, and uh, there's a security threat basically there is an anomaly which is being detected by a uh, say uh, due to uh, security uh, inherent say a person tries to uh, uh, close the uh, surveillance camera or tamper the surveillance camera by some means so can we detect it at the edge itself rather than sending this sending the live feed to the cloud and then getting the uh, re response from the cloud which might take time for arising the alarm so how about doing this video analytics or the uh, edge level itself at the smart home level itself? So that is one of the use case. Next use case is unsupported video playback. Say for example, we are trying to uh, play a uh, uh, particular format of video and that uh, particular format of video is not supported by the uh, device. 
uh, say the MPEG-4 or some say for for this for just for the naming reason for the for mentioning I'm saying say the v, a TV does not have an MPEG-4 player, but uh, but uh, say the mobile has a video converter which can uh, convert it into the format supported. So can we use uh, how about using this? Uh, mobiles capability to convert it to a format which the video uh, which the tv can play so this is one of the other uh, uh, few, few, uh, feature or a poc which we are done and showcase over here so now i think uh, we'll see the uh, demo of this uh, these use cases uh, which will uh, give a more brief uh, of how really home edge works uh, hans can you just play the video We would like to demonstrate a scenario how the edge, edge computing can, can be a useful tool when we talk of a home scenario. Inside the home, if devices contain an edge layer, they are easily able to interact as they, are as they become discoverable. Whatever services they are running can be rendered upon any device and we will see how this the power of the edge can be used, can be utilized inside a home scenario. We are uh, for the current for the current demo. We are we are, uh, we have set up an intrusion detection system where a CCTV camera has been set up, which which has been demonstrated by a Logitech webcam. We have one uh, we have one uh, i7 laptop. The i7 laptop is running an AI client. The exact same AI client is also running on a mobile phone, which is an S9 device. For any user output, we are showing uh, an app on an, another S9 device. This could, can also be an this can be an Android phone or any other device with, which has a screen, maybe a TV, washing machine. We have set up a dashboard. The dashboard is to show vitals of the mobile phone and the laptop to show that how the tasks are being delegated by the edge. This also uh, makes us understand that how the edge is working. We will be will be trying to demonstrate that how use usage of edge computing can help us in improving latency, bandwidth, and privacy. For the current scenario, whenever the CCTV camera is blacked out, because we have AI instances running inside the home only, we are trying to harness power and therefore run whatever processing that the AI needs to do inside the home, maybe on the mobile or on the laptop. We are not sending any data on the cloud, saving us from latency, any bandwidth issues that we might face, and also the privacy concern of sending a home feed to the cloud. We would like to demonstrate this uh, with a demo. For the first case, we will just try to make an intrusion on the camera. So let's say there's a thief that comes inside the house and covers the camera. As soon as the camera got covered, we see that the app, here we got a notification that the app is launched. The, if you if you try to play, so we see that there is a person that that came to the camera and closed it. We also see a, a message saying that the camera is out of focus or dirty, which is an output that we received from the AI agent. Currently, we can see that the AI agent that was selected was Linux and not the Android phone because. Uh, reading the vitals, the score of Android is very less than the score of Linux, as this is a as this is an i7 machine. Whenever we try to process, whenever we try to make an intrusion, in all cases, the Linux system is being selected as the score is really high. Whenever we Whenever we get an intrusion on our end device, we see a notification saying that camera intrusion has been detected. Clicking on the intrusion, we can get get uh, we can get into the app tell, telling us whatever is the problem with the camera, and also being able to see the video. We've also tried to maintain a history where we know that what is the problem with the camera. It is out of focus. It is dirty, and or it is blacked out. For all the instances, you can see that whatever is happening with the camera through a video instance also. The app gives you a notification whenever there is an intrusion and 
the, uh, the phone is also capable of running whatever the Linux system is running. Let's say that I take my Linux system out of the network. In case of mobile, we can, uh, if my mobile was processing something, maybe I just got out of the network. So somebody else has to process it. As you see, when I close the camera, Android has been selected. There is an app running on the Android, a service running on the Android that is processing, analyzing and giving the feedback back to this viewer app. We have received a notification here. Click on the, on the notification. We can see that who, what is the intrusion that took place. Plus we also see that the camera has been covered or blacked out. This will be a permanent storage also. In the video repository, you can go and see all the previous intrusions that have taken place. If I bring my Linux system back into the network, and now I tried to cover the camera. So my Linux system will be selected and all requests will be delegated to it as it is a more powerful machine. I will receive a notification that intrusion has been detected and you can play the video again and see that whatever is the output of the AI. We also want to project one more case scenario. That the scenario being that what happens when a request is delegated to a machine and that machine moves out of the network or becomes heavily loaded or crashes. In those cases also, our system is capable of redirecting the request to some other machine. In this case, we would like to demonstrate by sending a request from, from the camera to the Linux machine and in between of the processing crashing the machine. We would see that the Android triggers up and would process the output and give a notification on the, uh, on the end device. So in our case, we'll go and we'll turn off the network only when the service request has been received. So service request has been received and I'm turning off the network. I, I, I've already got a notification saying that intrusion has been detected. Network has become unreachable, but the Android has started the service now. Video is being an analyzed and the output has been sent back. Whenever I open this notification that I had received, it processed normally and the user will never know that some device moved out of the network or some other device had processed it. Let me get back into the network. So we're talking of a case when we are, there is only one device in the network and maybe I moved out of the network and came in back. So this device will, so this device will continue processing right from where it stopped and it gave back whatever result it should have and on opening the app I, we got we got a notification saying intrusion had been detected at a previous time instance and same video that was processed on android was being sent by linux this has been done to make the system more robust as all failures are redirected to other systems and in case there are no other systems, the process starts exactly from where it had stopped. Yeah, thank you Hans. Excellent. So in the future, my uh, washing machine will be doing intrusion detection? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> all right, that, that was really cool. Um, okay, so I have, um, I have one person wants to come on stage, so I'm going to hand Cody the mic. Howdy. Uh, hey, Cody, go guys. for it. Uh, yeah, so I was just wondering, you know, this is a really cool project. Uh, there's a couple points where I'm seeing kind of, uh, at least when it's nascent stage, uh, you know, how do you envision this becoming more user-friendly? Um, and yeah, like Hans said, like, when can I expect my fridge to run machine learning models for my token? Okay. Um, 
Yeah, because I guess one thing that I was just wondering about is like, you know, if I'm just an average user and I don't know anything about computers, um, you know, how am I going to get these containers up and running? And how am I going to know like what workloads to, can actually be run on, on different devices? Okay. So to answer you this question, uh, basically <clears throat> the device capabilities are good from the hardware uh, point of view, but the containers or the services from the devices, is the devices don't really support all these uh, kind of so say the intrusion with the mechanism in a washing machine. Uh, if it doesn't have how to uh, get it from the cloud. So for this point of uh, view, we need some a cloud a synchronization mechanism. And uh, that is how we envision that by this year, we'll have a cloud synchronization and a cloud integration. So that uh, by this year, it, it is like more on the uh, uh, a base platform is ready for any user or a developer to take it across and use it for as my, uh, his home devices. Uh, so to say you a fact, uh, in a timeline of this year end, we see uh, easier uh, usage adaptation of a smart home uh, platform by any user. Does it uh, answer your question? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. great. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Um, oh, one more. Hang on. All right, Suparna. Hey. hey, welcome. Hey, can you hear me, guys? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, how do you train these models? How do you build those models? Uh, okay. And how do you deploy it actually in a uh, in a, a continuum, continuous space? Okay, you know, this is uh, for the demo use case. Uh, as it, it is uh, for showcasing the home edge uh, functionality or the capability. So the demo, the model is we are taking it from the... Uh, uh, open source from the Kaggle data sets we used and we did a training of the model and we just used three users for uh, detecting it, uh, the user and all. Uh, but uh, the main uh, uh, what, uh, functionality which we wanted to show across there was uh, offloading rather than on the, uh, say, the model execution or the model training or the fine tuning of it. Because uh, at the first level, we wanted to show that the camera didn't have this capability but say this mobile and the laptop had, so can I use the capability of mobile and laptop? So that was the our uh, whole idea of uh, having a uh, demo on uh, det uh, person detection. And uh, uh, without saying it is all now, it is more fancy to have uh, A or ML functionalities rather than a rule engine based uh, workloads to show the, make the demos more better. And hence we use this one. So there is not a continuous training or uh, fine tuning of the model happening at the edge level. It is just, we have just deployed the model and it is not uh, a fine tuning or uh, it is mo not more on the model capability which we are trying to showcase here. But when we say, when we go ahead and have these cloud integrations and when the data goes into the cloud, we need to think on these angle of uh, how can we uh, give back the data for fine tuning the model on the cloud because at the no, end, no uh, yeah, yeah, i i i understand okay. that how those my question is uh, that even for the demo or in a realistic uh -huh. scenario uh, you are building the you are you are you are actually training the model or building the model somewhere yes, else yes yes right? yes yes so my question is let's say when i get the phone uh, do i how do I do? Uh, I just uh, download an app and that will come with the model yes. or wh what? Are, what's your plan? Okay, see this. Or when you sell the device, it will come bundled with a trained model. Uh, yeah, what's okay, yeah. What's the so uh, see model and these are all more on the business logic point of view. Say there is one model which is for the user detection. Can be some other model which is detecting for the uh, say pet monitoring or stuff for this. So these are all different models are for different uh, use uh, different uh, business cases. And we are not uh, currently tra working on training or say tar build uh, uh, encompassing a model or within our framework into it. So for us, this model is all on the application logic or more outside of our framework. And but I, I, I get your point, like, do I get a model out of the box with the app, say, in case of an Android? 
or uh, say uh, as an application i would get or how do i deploy this model and would it be a trained model or do i need to train or is, is your question i understand it but currently we don't uh, offer this model or uh, as a part of the home edge platform uh, uh, the second question is that let's say for example e um there are different types of use cases which will be catered by different Correct, models right. uh, um, and there can be uh, a huge amount of use Correct, cases right, right? right, I mean, right. like uh, as you have seen in alexa mm -hmm. for example mm -hmm. so question is that uh, uh, do you have it i mean uh, how samsung or lfh is planning on that is it a, there will be a model marketplace or how uh, uh, what's your plan uh, third party models or you're going to build your own uh, any idea yeah okay so we also had a thought on this when we when the cloud and integration of cloud was coming in and instead of reinventing the model again uh, because there are few uh, we need to start thinking on something which is not there and we don't need to do the model development or stuff maybe training is alone enough and if there's a model which say edgex edgex also has some analytics and stuff so we are uh, thinking on the part of uh, model uh, uh, if needed we'll build it upon but most of the time I, I, uh, we will not be building upon the models as a part of uh, samsung or uh, home edge as a part of it but we might be uh, you collaborating with other open sources or we can use a tensor flow from the google it depends on the type of use case and the model building so and this uh, will be going in along with our charter for this year when we are going to define the uh, cloud integration because not only just data synchronization is important even the model and the service synchronization from the cloud and service man the cl model management from the cloud is also important so we'll be taking across as point of uh, consideration when we are uh, uh, finalizing the fear architecture of the design for the cloud one so uh, we'll be having answer for these by might be in another uh, in this by a month or two when we have the designs on this oh, I, thank you it looks like i accidentally kicked the uh, suparna oh. off uh, <laughs> um, no. all right well, we'll have a little bit of networking we'll finish up here pretty quickly uh, aaron you wanted to add something yeah uh, i i kind of wanted to uh, make sure that everybody kind of Sorry, apparently now my dog just decided to bark. Um, you you got to love working from home. Um, but part of this is also remember uh, one of the big things that LF projects and LF Edge projects do is handle the plumbing. Um, and then a third party or a third, you know, a company comes in and might throw on the UI onto it. Now, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that might be two, three years from now that, you know, maybe Home Edge would have a great UI or, or maybe it's six months. I don't want to say anything along that. But if you think about, um, if you happen to see our last talk with Edge X, um, the person who was doing it is the CTO of a company called IOTech Systems, um, in addition to being uh, the, uh, uh, one of the co-founders of um, Edge X. So there, that company kind of puts the UI and some other layers on top to make it that user friendly. So if you you know want to start up a company or you know Suresh and Mookie want to, uh, I wouldn't you know put any pressure on them since they work for a great company already. But um, you know if you wanted to start up that company that puts on that UI that helps them out. Uh, or helps the end user for it, that is kind of where it would go. And then maybe, or maybe you work for uh, one of the you know, appliance manufacturers and you want a more universal thing so that your appliances can be part of something that don't, you know, that isn't owned by Apple. Um, you know, and so therefore you can do it. And that's kind of what we, uh, a lot of the LF projects do is really do that plumbing. And I just wanted to throw that out there. Cool. Yeah, no, I, I, I think this is great. I mean, this is the, the benefit of open source, right? Is, yeah. Uh, you, you're this getting is the hard the basic, part. Yep. Yeah, you're getting the, the hard part is being done, right? And uh, mm -hmm. at least uh, you, you've been given a, a basic framework and, and building blocks to go off. So, yeah, no, that that's that's uh, very valuable. Yeah, especially, I say, yeah, that's the easy part as the guy who... <laughs> who, who works on back-end systems and not um, not on UI. So, um, uh, <laughs> but yeah, and, okay. and, and that's the, that's you know 
LF open source is think plumbing, yep. all of that hard stuff to do it. Um, you know, where we all need to come together to make a product. Yep. So anyways, back to, cool. uh, to, our, right. to our real. Um, I think that was it. So I, I wanted to allow for some networking time. Unfortunately, uh, we started late because of some technical issues, but, uh, um, uh, if you guys want to hang around, um, Suresh, was there anything else that you needed to add or you wanted to add? Yeah, no, I think, uh, I'm done of it. Uh, might be for okay. any, any things we can, uh, meet up in the yeah. Slack and, uh, we have the uh, GitHub pages and wiki pages yep. where people can get more details on the data on the project as such. And are you able to hang out for a little bit at, sure. uh, at one of the sure, tables? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so folks, I'm gonna, uh, again, thank you Suresh thank you, and Munki uh, for the for your time. I'm sorry about the technical issues, um, but we, we actually, we now know for next time so we can warn other people. Um, and uh, this was awesome. This is, this is a fantastic project. Um, it's actually a lot more than what I was thinking, uh, but uh, otherwise, thank you again. And uh, you know, you guys are welcome to, uh, whenever you, you wanna come out and give an update, you want feedback, um, you know, hop on our Discord server as well. Um, and, uh, um, you know, it, as you can tell from the, the chat window that we have a pretty engaged community. So um, <laughs> with that, I'm going to end the session here and uh, I will see you guys at uh, one of the tables. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys.